morning. Dobrogo uh, ranku. Did I say that correctly? That's the only Ukrainian I know. Um, so my name is Roland Alt. I'm CEO of Ever Adventure. Um, first of all, really thanks a lot for Casual Connect for inviting us here. I thought the presentation so far were really great, and it's, it's such a really great event to learn more about the industry. So it's really exciting. Um, so we're going to talk today about KPI of real money casino versus social casino. And to be honest, that's been a topic that's been discussed a lot. So hopefully I have introduced some new things in this slide deck that maybe you don't know or you haven't you know, seen before. Um, just a little bit about us. Uh, we're actually a new kid on the block. So we're like uh, still sort of a, a startup company started last year, headquartered out of Gibraltar. And uh, we are focused only on one thing, which is being a social casino, but in the real money space. So we're a real money social casino. Um, and so in terms of the ARPU, we're actually positioned between the sort of uh, real money guys and the social guys. So between the $800 ARPU and the $20 ARPU. And the same goes for conversion as well. Um, so what we're very interested in, and I think everybody probably here as well, is this convergence of social gamers and real money gamers. Um, and that's been talked about a lot in the last 18 months. Every single conference that I personally go to, people talk about this. Somebody is launching something in the real money space or you know, a social uh, casino operator is launching um, uh, a new offering. And, and, and so you know, here there's just some examples. Obviously with Zynga, they've entered the space through a partnership with Bwin. Um, there's been a number of operators who launched um, on Facebook on their real money platform. Um, so there's a lot of buzz. Um, I don't think from what we've seen so far there's been a disruption yet, you know, and, and a disruption should mean that the market changes. Um, and I don't think that's actually happened yet in the real money, uh, in, the real in the gambling industry. And I think that's great for startups like us and like in everybody in this room, I think, for creating new, you know, uh, a disruption basically. I think that's still happening in this industry. Um, so what's actually happening on Facebook's real money platform, it's been discussed by Angelo before already, but you know, just briefly go over it. Gamesys was the first, uh, Bonza, I think with um, uh, partnership with Unibet was the second, and then you had 88, and then Paddy Power as well. Um, so when I type these applications into the Facebook search bar, I actually get the MAU numbers. It's probably not a true reflection, but what, I, what it tells me is that it really has not, again, to my point earlier, it, it hasn't really disrupted yet. I think it's, you know, it's just sort of warming up. And uh, there's probably a number of reasons for that, part of which are product related. And some, some are also maybe these uh, products are not fully using Facebook's APIs to the extent that they could. There's probably a couple of reasons for that. But I think that's just kind of interesting that it's just in its infancy at the moment. Um, Industry-wise, and I think you know, Barak covered some of this already as well, it's obviously a huge market worldwide, $400 billion. That's both offline and online for real money casino. Uh, then we have 800 million uh, social gamers, of which 20% are social gamblers, generating $2 billion in revenue, uh, which is a lot for a market that hasn't been around, you know, sort of five years ago. Um, and then we have online gamblers, and that's only 50 million people. You know, only 50 million people, according to this research report, actually are online gamblers. But these gamblers generate $33 billion in revenue. Um, and so you can already see the ARPU difference here in terms of you know the LTV difference. You know they have 160 million social gamblers generating two billion, and only 50 million generating 33 billion dollars uh, in revenue. And I think that's exactly where the opportunity is because you have the volume in the social gamers, 160 million people, and if you convert only 10 percent of those, it would actually make the entire industry grow by 30 percent. And that's precisely where I think the opportunity is in this in this industry. Um, so here's some KPIs that we just derived from annual reports and so on. Uh, they're obviously estimates, and, and I would say, so the first one here talks about DAUs. So it's no secret, the social casinos have more DAUs than online casinos. We've estimated up to 50 times, if, depending on which statistic you look at. Um, now that's not, that's not really a big surprise, uh, because you know, I think the social casinos are designed for engagement, People come in. People, you know, get it. You know, if you like, we don't like to use the word addicted, but you know, I they really like to engage with the game to the extent that you know they then spend a lot of time in it. It's not necessarily initially about the deposit experience, 
Um, uh, and that brings me to the second point where you have this huge con difference in conversion. So in real money casinos, it's up to 70 times higher conversion than social casino. Um, why is that? I mean, it's not really that surprising. If you go to the uh, online casinos uh, in the UK or you know, in any regulated market, you can see that all these products are designed for conversion. They don't really want you to play too long for free. You know, that's very different than a social casino. It's, it's almost like black and white, you know? And that's why the conversion ratio is higher. And it brings me to the third point, which is the ARPU. Again, you know, it's much higher in social, uh, in um, real money compared to social. And that also is not a big surprise uh, as a result of what I said before. And, and uh, what's interesting is if you look at the annual reports of some of these real money casinos, they actually define ARPU differently than, you know, the Zingas and so on. They think ARPU is only a paying user. Uh, in most cases, and and that just reflects this thinking that you know the real money casino industry mainly is concerned with a paying player and not with a uh, with a free to play um, sort of type player. So let's talk about you know, sort of the pros and cons of each model. You know, I mean, I think some of you guys are probably game developers, and maybe you're already in here, or like you like us trying to figure out what to do and. You know, if we just compare BWIN, 888, and Playtica, and we look at only the casino revenue, only the casino revenue, uh, we actually get an interesting picture, which is BWIN last year about $350 million in, in revenue, 888 about $165 million, and Playtica at $200 million. And I think, again, I think Barack touched on this in his presentation as well. I mean, that's staggering, right, for a company that's been around, what, since 2010? You know, and then if you look at the EBITDA margin, they're actually also much more profitable than these real money casinos. So it's a really, really great business. I mean, there's no other way to say this. You know, I think it's a great business to have this kind of like, uh, have a social casino in the, in the space. However, there are pros and cons. So I think the pros are for social casino, uh, you don't have to deal with withdrawals, right? I mean, with a real money casino, if you go out there and build one, you know, people, you know, somebody deposits 10 pounds, wins 20 pounds, you have 30 pounds, the guy could take all these 30 pounds out. That doesn't happen in a, in a social casino on Facebook. Um, there's also no bonus cash concept uh, at the moment in, in, in social casinos. So, you know, the real money casinos often give you bonus cash, which have a wagering requirement, and you don't need to deal with that in a social casino. Uh, you also have rules engines. I mean, that's a great advantage. If I publish my social game on Facebook, I can make whatever RNG I want. There's no police uh, yet, I think. Uh, it might get regulated at some point, but right now you can pretty much put whatever rules engine you want in your slot game. That's a great advantage. You don't have that advantage as a real money casino operator. Um, you're on Facebook, you have a K factor almost immediately. You know, If you put, unless it's a really bad product, you're gonna have some sort of virality that's fantastic. Uh, and that results in lower acquisition costs and why some of these casino companies have grown from nothing to like play ticket two hundred million dollars is, is directly as a result of that. Now what are the cons on the other hand? I've already discussed the ARPUs are lower. Uh, the ARPUs are lower on um, uh, for a social casino. You also get lower conversion so you have this entire business model basically built on I need masses volume and then I need to convert a small slice of that volume into real money players. Um, it's also competitive. I mean, if you put a list of social casinos and real money casinos, I would make the argument there's a lot more social casinos than, than real money casinos. So as a new startup, let's say, why would it, you know, which one would I really want to pick to compete in? Something to think about. Uh, there's also platform fees um, that you have to pay uh, to people like Apple, Facebook, etc. If you if you um, uh, if you're a social casino, and then lastly, the total addressable market. So I just shortened that to TAM is actually at the end of the day smaller for social casino than real money casino. It's growing faster. You know, it's growing much faster, but it's still smaller, and so you have sort of a smaller addressable market. So I just thought it was interesting to look at openly sort of the pros and cons of each model. Um, when making a decision, you know, what product to build. Um, I also want to talk about virality. Uh, I think virality is uh, important for any industry. I mean, you know, Dropbox, Hotmail, Skype, those products would not be around if 
you know, if the virality wouldn't have worked. And what I'm doing here is on the top, um, taking a look at an annual report from a casino, a real money casino. It's in Sweden, it's called Mr. Green. Some of you may have heard of it. Um, it's just been started about five years ago. Uh, revenue right now about 30 million euros, so a very successful, successfully executed business. Um, but have a look at the marketing expenditure in, 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 in um, relation to revenue, what they call game win. Um, it's about 50% in the last couple of years, um, and that's actually quite high. And then on the bottom left slide, you can see that 30, uh, you know, the on average real money operators will spend about 30% on marketing. That's also quite high. And um, if you look in the top right slide, you can see that Zynga, it's probably a little bit small to see here on the slide, but it's Zynga spends about 10, 15% on marketing. Now, why can they do that? You know, the answer is virality. And, and, and in the real money space, there is none at the moment. And I think, you know, to create disruption, you need, you need a sort of a K factor uh, in order to make it happen. And I think that's, that's just an interesting, I think, perspective to look at. Um, so as I said in the beginning, a lot of things have actually been tried. Um, we've, we've seen essentially real money products being ported to social. So we've seen a lot of operators come into the social space. Um, that has not you know, really worked yet. I think the gamification and the virality and maybe some of the user interface there is not quite there. We've also seen some of the uh, social guys coming into the real money world, like uh, Zynga Plus Casino was launched in the UK, I think on April the 3rd. Um, hasn't really taken off, I think, wildly. And if you look at the two, I just added the screenshots here, you know, it's obviously a white label of the BWIN platform. Um, and so when you do something like that, um <coughs> it's not really new, it's not really disruptive. And I think players in the UK you know, if you put a casino in front of them, they probably need something radically different if you want to capture sort of new uh, or compete effectively in that market. Um, and it's also kind of a joint venture, which is happening a lot, like with social casino operators and real money operators. And that can work well, but I think it also uh, adds, you know, operational inefficiencies. Um, two case studies. I mean, Nick obviously from <laughs> Facebook, but you probably know this better than anyone, but I mean, uh, let's look at Playtica first. And um, again, I think that's everybody's favorite. Everybody talks about Playtica. It's sort of the one that's been most successful. Um, I might want to put a different spin on it. I'm going to look at the conversion that they get. So with 1% conversion, let's just assume that that's what they get at the moment. They generate $200 million, right? So let look at what happens when the conversion rate goes up 2%, you know, 10%, 25% could actually be a $50 billion company if it's 25%. And I know what you're going to think. You're going to think 25%, that sounds crazy. Well, there's a, some reports out there from Morgan Stanley where some on, you know, real money casinos, they actually get 50 to 70% conversion from sign up to real money. And that's for the reason that I told you before. If you tune a product for deposits, you know, that's essentially what you're going to get to. So there's actually a big opportunity if companies like that would be real money significant revenue opportunity. And then for Facebook, I just really like this from Business Insider, so I, I keep using it. It's just when they, they make this hypothesis if gambling was sort of legal, which in the US it's obviously heading towards that state, it could be a 100 billion revenue company, and that's revenue, right? So right now their revenue is about, I think it was about $5 billion. Um, so that could be m huge, you know, at that point, if, uh, if gambling was actually fully working on, on Facebook and and legalized. Um, so getting close to the end, this is actually our product. It's called Slotzer. And as I said before, we're focused on real money social casinos. So you can see two wallets in this product. You can see a chip wallet, and you can also see a pound wallet. And people basically, you know, freemium people can play with their chips. And if you want to deposit, then you have an opportunity to do that in the pound wallet. And uh, some of these games that we designed here. And again, it's kind of designed for reality, gamification, and so on. Um, now this talk is about KPIs, so I thought, why don't I share some KPIs with you that we've learned so far. Uh, we're currently in alpha, so we're still in an early stage, but it's, it's promising. Uh, the Dow to Mao ratio we get is about 23%, which is about so in between the social casino and the online casino, which is where we want to be. 
uh, real money conversion, we're at about 10%. So that's people who crossed the bridge from sort of the social side into real money. And the friend invites, we haven't, we haven't got enough data yet for the K factor, but you know, we looked at all the, all the players and 10% of them at least invited one friend. So uh, I think you know, it's very promising and we're obviously very excited over the next sort of 90 days to, to, to uh, grow this product. Um, that's it for me. Thank you very much. If you want to email me, feel free to do so and happy to take any questions. Placebo. Well, maybe I'll start with the first question. Um, games that appear in the real world seem to convert over very well to games on online world. Do you think we'll ever see games that are social games that are, don't physically manifest in the real world become very dominant? Games that don't manifest, can you give an example of such a game? game um, poker is played in the real world, slots are played in the real world. They're all games that physically you can go play in a casino and they yeah. convert over very well. It always goes that way. Yeah. But there are certain games that you can play online but that, that, ha that you can only play online. Do they seem to monetize very well or you don't seem to see very many of them? Is there any reasons why? So you mean like, uh, let's say games like, like Tetris, for example, for instance, if, yes. they, if they're in the real money? I mean, that's, that's a fascinating topic in itself. We often have a lot of brainstorming sessions in the office about that. I mean, that's in itself another major disruption that you could do. Um, I don't really have an answer, you know, which one would do well or would not do well on it yet, but I think uh, it should. It should work. I think what we've seen is uh, some bonus games were introduced that maybe use some of these like offline concepts and maybe introduce that into a gambling um, into a gambling game as a bonus game, but I haven't seen one yet that, that actually works well um, yet at this point. I think people stick to what's proven, and that's poker, slots, and so on as the first step. Any more questions? So again, I, I'll ask the question that we asked before about fraud and uh, what, what percentage or what techniques or tricks that you put in place to try and sort of uh, minimize the amount of fraud that you get? Yeah, we hate fraudsters. Um, there's too many of them out there. Um, you know, what we do is basically, um, there's some technologies where now uh, you can put your ID in front of your web camera and it takes a photo of it, automatically OCRs the data and puts it into our system. So that's the first step. So you obviously have the documentation in the database. But other than that, you know, you can probably look at some things like, does this person have friends? Which is, I, I like to use to the extent social data, if, if, if we have that available, to see you know, uh, how likely you know, is that person a fraudster. But uh, you probably cannot avoid a manual check at this point, you know, especially you know, for, for some of the more tricky cases. Um, but I'd say a combination of those two is kind of what we do for fraud. Um, and we're actually, I think we're under sort of 0.5%, so, so far so good. Hi. Hi. Uh, I have a quick question. Uh, do people uh, like and share uh, those personal information about which game they're playing, what, um, what the amount of uh, they won, and so on? What, what kind of information people uh, would like to share, and uh, what would it basically on your experience? I mean, I in social gaming. Uh, the most popular one for us, sharing-wise, is when people level up and they basically have this positive experience. And at that point, we see most conversion to actually sharing. And, um, you know, that's for us, it's the most successful one. And then obviously, that's, you know, the, in terms of the story that you create, you can do a lot of testing on that and make sure that that's optimized. But it's, um, that for us wor seems to work the best way. So it's, it's always, always about having a positive experience, maybe when they win something or when they have sort of a, again, in our case, we have a wheel, you know. Some achievements, some, some things. Yeah, the, uh, we have badges. Yeah. Those are really good too, the badges. We haven't tested them enough yet as we should, but, but it's, uh, I think those are very, very promising because they, um, for every badge, obviously, you can have that shared. So, but I think it's still, right now, what we see the most is between the level ups, but it's probably gonna be evening out with the, with the badges, you know. And leaderboards uh, based on the levels or experience, uh, what, how is it? 
We haven't got leaderboards yet. Uh, um, and the reason for that is just um, we are a real money operator. Uh -huh. So we're a little bit careful about introducing that feature. Um, so I can't answer it yet, but we were thinking about that. You just have to be careful how you, how you do that, right? Yeah. Um, but that's an interesting one as well, yeah. Thank you. Yep, welcome. I, I'm curious, uh, I don't know if you have a lot of data, but um, what is the period that people, I'm going to try and find somebody to stand, what is the period that people go before paying out and cashing out? If I put money in there and I win, I accumulate the balance, how often do people claim their winnings? Do they keep it in there? Do they take it out at a regular interval? Can you give any, any examples of how that works? Yeah, that's where we basically, we have different player buckets. Um, so one bucket is definitely your hardcore gambler. And, uh, and then the other bucket would be your freemium player. Maybe I would also say a bucket called bonus hunters. Bonus hunters probably will never deposit ever, but they kind of become our marketing force because they're the people who share a lot of information. Um, it tends to be, it, it tends to vary quite a lot across you know, these buckets. And I think uh, for the hardcore segment, um, they will deposit, they will play. Uh, if they win, they will immediately take that out. Uh, but we actually think that's not a bad thing because it will, they will tend to be back the next day. So that's why I'm saying that economics is a little bit like interesting because you actually want people to withdraw. You want people to take that money out. They see it on the credit card and they go, yay. And then they come back the next day. Um, and then for the freemium guys, um, you know, what we've seen there is people who have not never been exposed to an online casino before ever, I think they're very cautious. They say, why do you need my documentation and so on? And so this withdrawal process is, again, something that's new for them. Um, and then it's, you know, but they're just as interested at the end of the day as getting their money than, um, than, the, than the other segment. But I think um, in both, in, you know, generally speaking, most players want, want, want their withdrawal as soon as possible. So you is, uh, uh, my philosophy on that is always like to give that really quickly. You know, there's no point to delay that. I know some there's different tactics for that, but it tends to be different across these different buckets. I think. Yeah. All right. Uh, you talked about uh, worst conversion of uh, social uh, online games in comparison to online casinos, right? Uh, why don't you think uh, you could use the uh, same marketing features and uh, player treatment as in online casinos? I mean pressure on players. Unlike in online casinos where players come only to play, people check into social networks almost every day or even several times a day, and you can send them messages through these applications, etc., etc. Why don't you think you can use even more pressure than online casinos do to convert players? Yeah, I mean, uh, that's a great question. I mean, I think that we should, right? I mean, because you have an advantage with, with something like, for example, what we're doing is we have an advantage of um, giving people chips in a promotion or giving people bonus cash or giving people other free spins, for example. Um, so I think you're absolutely right. We're, our promotions will be a mix between the two. And we just have to s think about, I guess, um, which one is gives us the highest sort of you know, ROI and so on. But um, yeah, I think that's, that's a great point. This makes total sense to mix the two. I actually get every day from the social casinos on Facebook, I get an email and things like that. So totally, totally true. Okay, one more question. Thank you very much. Thank you.